So I'd like to talk a little bit about breast cancer prevention. So there is a, an excellent book that I would, and, and I'm going to be talking about breast cancer prevention, but this goes, al goes along, this is for all types of cancer prevention. Um, there's a book written by a physician, his name is Dr. Khalid Mahmoud, and he was an oncologist. And he got to the point where he really was discouraged about treating people at the time that they had cancer, and he really wanted to go into preventative medicine. So I'm going to just read a little bit of the back of his book to get you a sense of what his thought process was. In 1970, one out of 10 American women developed breast cancer. Now it was one out of eight. It's the disease women dread, yet physicians who tell patients how to avoid, can how to avoid heart attacks have nothing to say about the prevention of breast cancer. By the time a cancer cell in the breast grows into a diagnos diagnosable breast cancer, usually 15 to 20 years have elapsed. During this long journey, the cancer is inhibited by many factors and stimulated by others. It is possible to enhance the inhibitors and diminish the stimulators to snuff out the tiny cancer, or at least de to delay its clinical appearance. This book provides the reader clear strategies to reduce the risk of cancer, strategies that are based not only on my experience as an oncologist, but also an extensive review of the scientific literature. These strategies consist of simple and natural measures, things to take and things to do with little or no use of pharmaceuticals. So back to our functional medicine here, <clears throat> genetics. So there's not a lot we can do about genetics, but there is some testing. The BRCA gene, you may have heard, high risk of breast cancer and other types of cancer with the BRCA gene mutation. Environmental, so toxins like lead, mercury, uh, dioxins, uh, BPAs from plastics, even solvents from, from nail polish can, can accumulate in the cells in the body, especially in the fat. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about phase one and phase two detoxification that, per, per, uh, that occurs in the, in the, um, in the liver. Um, lifestyle, this is certainly where our concentration will be as far as prevention, nutrition and exercise. So what we want to do in preventing cancers, not just breast cancer, we want to decrease free radicals. So what are free radicals? Free radicals are molecules that have lost a an electron. And I like his description of free radicals. Imagine a guy in a bar wreaking havoc by trying to steal everybody's girlfriend. Okay, so that's a free radical. So what do free radicals do? They, they damage DNA, they damage cell walls, they interfere with enzymatic um, processes. We also, in prevention of cancer, we want to increase natural killer cells that actually kill off bad cells that occur in our bodies. We want to avoid the toxins. We mentioned some of the toxins previously. We want to keep our body fat low. So toxins do accumulate in the fat. Also, what happens with fat is in women and in men, actually, there's something called aromatase that is an enzyme that converts testosterone to estrogen. So in the breast, in the breast cells, in the, um, if you have a lot of fat, that can increase the estrogen in the breast cells themselves. Men, if they have a, a lot of body fat, their testosterone can be converted into estrogen. So it ha happens in both cases. Uh, why, uh, alcohol and smoking increases free radicals. Um, red wine is the best to drink. Um, it actually does decrease risks of breast cancer in moderation, though. Women, about a glass of wine. Men, no more than two. We want to decrease our inflammation to prevent cancer. So obviously, uh, our diet, we want to not eat trans fats. We want to eat a good um, low glycemic diet, lots of fruits, vegetables, lots of bioflavonoids in our fruits and vegetables, um, lean protein. Um, now, omega-3s that we find in fish or supplementation we want to keep that ratio of three, omega-3 three to omega-6 one to one. In the typical American diet, we usually see the omega-6 15 times more than omega-3. Just as an aside, there was a study that was in the Journal of Neurology this year 
where they measured omega-3 levels, hundreds of, of subjects, and they did PET scans and MR, functional MRIs. And they found that those that had higher levels of omega-3s had more brain matter and higher cognitive function. So a great reason to take an omega-3 supplement. So other, other uh, recommendations for breast cancer prevention is if you're doing a hormone replacement is to consider adding estriol. As we had mentioned, estriol binds to the estrogen receptors. It lowers risks of the breast cancer in the, cell, in the breast cells. Um, using natural progesterone, obviously never using pro, uh, progestin. I haven't seen a doctor use progestin in quite a long time, so that's a good thing. Exercise. So increase your, the METS it has to do with increase of the basic metabolic rate. So um, biking, jogging, um, these types of exercise increase your basic metabolic rate by four and a half times. So time-wise, I'd say 30 to 60 minutes per day of exercise. So if there's a block in your mind about exercise, think of what the block is and find something that you enjoy. I have so many patients say, I really don't, I don't have time. I don't have time to go to the gym or go to a class. I say, well, get a pedometer. Measure your steps. Try to aim for 10,000 steps. That's five miles. So that you can incorporate into your day. You know, take the stairs, take a walk around the block in the middle of the day. Take, just do mini bursts of, you know, lunges in the hallway, you know, whatever. But keep your, keep your metabolic rate high. Um, actually, T3 increases natural killer cells. It increases something called interleukin-2, which is actually used in breast cancer treatment. Um, it decreases inflammation, and it increases something called sex hormone binding globulin that actually binds to the hormones decreasing the amount of, say, estrogen in the breast cells. Other supplements um, that are recommended are vitamin E, and you want to do a vitamin E that's a whole vitamin E because there is an alpha tocopherol that they took, um, just separated out from the whole vitamin E that is not, um, not a good supplement. So you want to, if you're going to do vitamin E, you're going to do the whole thing um, with a gamma tocopherol. Folic acid is a very good supplement, especially if you do drink alcohol. Vitamin D, uh, we know that people that live in northern climates have an increased risk of heart disease, cancers, and multiple, no, multiple sclerosis because they have low vitamin D levels. So taking vitamin D, getting your vitamin D level checked um, and then taking appropriate supplement to keep your D level between 40 and 80 would be recommended. Green tea extract is actually very good for cancer, uh, breast cancer prevention and all cancer prevention. Selenium, mataki mushrooms, they increase uh, natural killer cells. Lycopene in, in tomatoes, in colored fruits. Um, lycopene has to be um, taken with fat, so like a, a spaghetti sauce would, would uh, help you absorb the lycopene. Indole-3C, now this is, a, this is a good one. So this is in cruciferous vegetables. Broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbage. Um, this really does, it, what it does is it enables the body to metabolize the estrogen in a positive way, and I'm gonna show you that. You'd have to, you have to eat a lot of broccoli, a lot of cruciferous vegetables to get the benefit. I mean, you know, if you incorporate it into your diet, it's going to be a beneficial. But if you truly have any risks, there is an Indole-3C supplement, and we actually have it here. And I use it in patients that when I check the way they're metabolizing it, and if they're not metabolizing it in a positive way, or they have risks of, of cancer in their family, I will have them take the Indole-3C supplement. 